Hello, my name is Nick and I'm here to give you a short demonstration on how to use a protoboard or a breadboard to wire together a circuit. And the idea is you start with a carefully drawn schematic that shows you the circuit that you're trying to implement, the components you're planning to use, information about the circuit. And from here, you want to use a combination of things. You want to use a protoboard, a collection of components, and a bunch of wires in order to implement this circuit on this protoboard and be able to do some, some simulation and analysis with it. So here's our circuit that we want to wire up. The important thing here is to have a well-drawn schematic. You want to make sure that you have a schematic where you have all of your pin numbers identified and all of your connections identified. This is important if your circuit doesn't work the first time and you need to debug it, you don't want to try to figure out how you've got it wired at the same time that you're looking for wiring mistakes and the same time that you're thinking about logic errors. Draw a good schematic first, label all the pins, figure out on paper exactly what your circuit should look like. Once you've done that, you don't need to think about the circuit anymore while you're building it. You're just following a recipe. So what I'm going to use here is a circuit called a 555 timer. And again, you don't need to understand the electronics at this point. Once you've got your schematic, all you're doing is following the instructions in that schematic to actually wire your circuit together. Now the wiring you're going to be doing is done on these protoboards, also called breadboards, and they're used basically to be able to do rapid prototyping without having to solder or otherwise connect wires together. And the way these work, as you should know from other um, discussions in class, this top row of holes are all connected together, this second row of holes are connected, and these bottom two rows are connected, but there's no connection from this row to this row or this row to this row. So you have four separate rows of connectivity going across, two on the top, two on the bottom. And then you have all these columns. These five dots in this column are all connected. The dots in this column are connected. This column is connected. But there's no connection from here to here. And so when we want to connect two pieces together, we can basically put them in the same column in order to connect the two ends together electrically without having to actually um, do any soldering or make a printed circuit board and so on. Now when you start with your schematic and you want to um, build a circuit based on that schematic, the first thing I recommend doing is hooking up power. Make sure you have a standard way that you hook power up to your protoboard and if you do one standard again and again and again you're less likely to make mistakes and end up reversing your current and you're less likely to accidentally forget to hook up some power connections and that'll take you a long time to debug if um, you inadvertently leave power or ground disconnected. So the standard I recommend for hooking up power is treat this top line here, this um, red line of holes as being positive, being 5 volts, and there's actually a plus sign here. And the same with this row up here. The blue row, treat that as being negative or ground, and treat this one as being negative or ground. So. Um, traditional colors are black for ground and red for um, power or VCC 5 volts. So I'm going to plug this into the positive side over here. I'm going to plug a black one into the negative side over here. And then I'm going to hook those up to my power supply after I'm done wiring my circuit. And I like to put these on opposite ends because it reduces the chance of um, accidentally plugging them into the same um, row of holes. The next thing I want to do is I want to get power not only up here but also on this red line down here and I want to get ground not only here but also here so that I have power and ground easily available on both sides. So I'm going to take a red wire and I'm just going to use it as a jumper and I'm going to do that on one end over here and just connect the two red rails together. So now I have power available up there and down here and then I'm going to do the same thing with the ground lines. Connect those together and bingo, now I've got easy access to power on either side of the board without having to cross wires over. Now when you're implementing your circuit from your schematic, the next thing I want to do is put in my integrated circuits into the board. You really don't have a whole lot of flexibility in how you do this. Your circuits have to straddle this middle line here. I try to always hook them up the same way, so for example I'm going to take pin 1 and I'm going to put it in this section over here. So there's pin 1. And I'm just going to kind of put it in the middle of the board just so that I have room to work around it. The next thing I want to hook up are my things with long leads. So resistors and capacitors and um, LEDs which have bendable leads on them. It means that I can put them more places in the board and still be able to get the ends connected to wherever I need them. Um, so I'm going to make those connections next. So I'm going to start with the capacitor. 
pin one goes to one end of the capacitor, the other end goes to pin two. So here's my 22 microfarad capacitor. And remember, this is pin one and pin two. So I'm going to um, just put this directly in the board between pins one and two. And since everything in this row is connected, pin one is now connected to this side of the capacitor, pin two is connected to this side. And you notice I didn't put it right next to the chip and I didn't put it right next to the end. I put it sort of in the middle to leave room on either side because I don't know where my other connections are going to go yet. So there's my capacitor. The next thing is a 22 kilo ohm resistor. So that should be red, red, orange. And you probably can't see it, but this is um, red, red, orange. And that goes between pin two and pin seven. So again, I'm going to put one end in pin two. And that one I am going to put right next to the chip. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'll put the other end on pin seven. And I'll leave some space. That's that resistor. And then there's a 2.2 .2 kilo ohm between pin seven and eight. So that's a red, red, red. There's my 2.2. Um, .2, and I already put the leads close to each other. And that needs to go between um, seven and eight. So I'm just going to put that right in those two holes. And I'm going to kind of bend it out of the way. So there's that second resistor. And then I have a one kilo ohm going between pin three and an LED. So here's a one kilo ohm, brown, black, red. And one end needs to go in pin three. So I'm just going to measure off pins one, two, three. And I'm going to put one end of the resistor in that hole. And then the other end is going to have to go to an LED. I can't physically connect this unless I were to twist the wires together or use an alligator clip or something like that. So when you want to make connections between two things like two resistors or a resistor and an LED, you just have to pick a hole somewhere in this board, put one end of your component in one hole in that row and then use another hole in that row to connect the other component and that will connect the two wires together electrically. So I'm just going to bring it over here so that it's kind of out of the way and put this in um, a more or less randomly chosen column like that. And then um, that's got to connect to an LED. Now LEDs, figuring out which side is which is a little tricky, but assuming nobody has cut them, um, there's always a long lead and a short lead. The short lead goes to ground, the long lead goes to power. So this end is going to get connected to the resistor. So I'm going to take this long lead and I'm going to connect that into one end of the resistor. And then the short lead I can just connect directly to ground. So I can actually just bring that over and plug it into the ground rail. And again, since I've got ground all the way available there, that's a perfectly good way to connect my LED up. The last thing is to hook up some of these extra wires. So for example, we need a wire between pins two and six. So I'll just take a little jumper wire here. I'll put one end in pin two's row and the other end in the row for pin six. So anywhere in there will work. And then I need another wire between pin four and pin eight. So I'll take a fairly short wire Put one end on pin four and the other end on pin eight. And then the last thing we need is a connection between power five volts and pin eight. So I'll take a red wire and put one end on pin eight and the other end on power. And the power, I'm kind of moving it out of the way here so that it's not in the middle of all the action there. And then we also have a power connection between pin one and ground. So I'll put a wire on pin one, and again, put the other end on ground, kind of out of the way. And that should be my finished circuit. So to apply power, I take the line that I put into my positive rail, and I connect that to an alligator clip going into the positive side of my power supply. And I take the ground line, hook that to an alligator clip going to the negative side of my power supply. And lo and behold, I have my blinking LED, which is what a 555 timer should do. 
So that's the basic methodology. Again, make sure that you have a well-drawn schematic. Hook up your power lines. Make sure that you have power rails that make sense to you and are consistent with how you always do it. Then put in your integrated circuits. Then place your components with long bendable leads, capacitors, resistors, LEDs. And then use jumper wires to make your other remaining connections. And then if something goes wrong, you can go back to your schematic and refer to that to help you debug your circuit. That's the basic technique. Have fun.